The spirit of solidarity that we have seen today is what we need, not just to prevent and mitigate the impact of future pandemics, but to end this one. The emergence of the Omicron variant has understandably captured global attention. At least 23 countries from five of six WHO regions have now reported cases of Omicron, and we expect that number to grow. WHO takes this development extremely seriously, and so should every country. But it should not surprise us. This is what viruses do. And it's what this virus will continue to do as long as we allow it to continue spreading. We're learning more all the time about Omicron, but there is still more to learn about its effect on transmission, severity of disease, and the effectiveness of tests, therapeutics, and vaccines. Several WHO advisory groups have met over the last couple of days to evaluate the emerging evidence and prioritize the studies needed to answer these questions. I thank Botswana and South Africa for detecting, sequencing, and reporting this variant so rapidly. It's deeply concerning to me that those countries are now being penalized by others for doing the right thing. We call on all countries to take rational, proportional risk reduction measures in keeping with international health regulations. This includes measures to delay or reduce the spread of the new variant, such as screening of passengers prior to traveling and or upon arrival, or the application of quarantine to international travelers. Blanket travel bans will not prevent the international spread of Omicron, and they place a heavy burden on lives and livelihoods. WHO continues to call on all countries to optimize public health and social measures and ensure that high-risk and vulnerable individuals in all countries are fully vaccinated immediately. At the same time, we must not forget that we are already dealing with a highly transmissible, dangerous variant, the Delta variant, which currently accounts for almost all cases globally. We need to use the tools we already have to prevent transmission and save lives from Delta. And if we do that, we will also prevent transmission and save lives from Omicron. But if countries and individuals don't do what they need to do to stop transmission of Delta, they won't stop Omicron either. Globally, we have a toxic mix of low vaccine coverage and very low testing, a recipe for breeding and amplifying variants. That's why we continue to urge countries to fully fund the ACT Accelerator to ensure equitable access to vaccines, tests, therapeutics all over the world. As we mark World AIDS Day, we're reminded that more than 40 years into the global AIDS epidemic, we still have no vaccine and no cure for this disease. Two years into the COVID-19 pandemic, we have not one, but many vaccines and many other effective tools. This virus has demonstrated that it will not simply disappear. How many more lives and livelihoods it takes is up to us. Ending the pandemic is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice.